Hi, I'm Lana. And I'm Sherry. And this is Real Estate Tips with SNL. Thanks for joining us today. Um, Sherry, who do we have here today? Oh, today, we have Mark <laughs> Fratoni from Watch Who's at Home Inspection. Yay! Howdy. Hey. Hi. Mm-hmm. Thanks, Mark. Thanks for having me. You know, so we're going to put you on the spot. We didn't prepare you at all. Nope. Correct. And uh, we want to make sure that we uh, we keep this spontaneous. <laughs> I think it's better. So, yes, I'd rather definitely. just have a conversation with you guys. There you go. See where it goes. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Oh, okay. So, so I, I thought it would be great to start with um, your background, because mm-hmm. I know that mm. prior to you being a home inspector, you were you were one of us. Yeah. You, you were one I of those. I went to the dark re- side. You did. You did. Yeah. Did. Now you're on the really dark side. Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> I like it better over here. Yeah. Oh, all right. Well, that's all right. I'm glad. I like so hearing that. I, I actually, you know, what made you decide to become a real estate agent, agent. and then what made you decide to make the switch? Mm-hmm. Uh, boy, I... On the spot. I mean, I think everybody has some inkling of wanting to sell real estate. Like, mm. there's a lot mm-hmm. of people that come in and out of that business, I think. It's it's just, it's got a allure to it. It's interesting. Um, so I kind of wanted to explore that at some point. I My background is quite varied. I went through a lot of different career paths, you might say, jobs. I used to use jobs to learn things. I'm mm-hmm. a very curious person. So when I was a kid, my dad taught me how to write a resume before I even, you know, I had my paper route on there and some like local, like family work that I'd done. So the first job interview I went on in high school, I got the job. Uh And then I realized like that was easy (laughs) because most people come in completely unprepared and don't know how to do that. I took advantage of that. So I started just anytime I wanted to learn something, I'd go get a job doing it. And I might go there for six months, a year, and then go do something else. And I kept doing that. Um, do, do you have ADHD? Oh, I'm 100 <laughs> not the fake kind. Diagnosed okay. somewhere in my late twenties, uh, I finally figured that out. Yes, that is um, great. I so went to college too, but you I did. I did a couple times. Did you times. need to? I got more out of working than I ever did college. Sure. Um, you know, like I was an ASC certified mechanic. I was a wine oh, wow. broker. I've had all kinds of different. You like, wine broker? Yeah. Oh, we're gonna talk later. That was my yeah. first. <laughs> <laughs> was um, wow. that was actually my first sales gig was okay. wine. Okay. Um, and then yeah, at some point I decided I should get my real estate license. My mother was a realtor when I was a kid. Oh. So I got dragged around. I was obnoxious during her open houses. <laughs> all that. Sort I of have thing. one of those kids. Uh. You know, I mean. He might, I don't know if he's going to listen to this, so I'm just going to say it. Yeah, he was totally obnoxious, yeah. you know, and, <laughs> and and that was back in the time when everything on the market was like a short sale or foreclosure, mm-hmm. and every time I brought him to one, he needed to use the bathroom, but the place had been winterized. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> yep. When I first got in, that's probably around the same time period, 2011, 2012, something like so, that. Yeah, yeah. And everything was a distressed property. Yes. Yes. So that was fun. So how long were you in real estate, like when you were selling? Well, I kind of mixed the two together for a while. So it, going back to ADHD for a moment, <laughs> to answer your question, what happened with me was I got my real estate license. I started working. And one of the first things I was asked to do was cover a home inspection for an agent who was too busy to be there. So I go in. And I see this thing taking place and I'm like, oh, I'm going to do that. Oh my goodness. But I mean, the ink wasn't even dry on my real estate license. <coughs> so I figured I should probably sell some real estate first. So I kind of put that on the shelf. Um, and I, I almost wish I hadn't because I didn't realize how tough it was to get a home inspection license in Massachusetts. Oh. It's a long process. Really? Yeah. Like nobody, you can't just go get it. It doesn't matter what your background is. Huh. You actually have to do like an apprenticeship. And there's not many people to apprentice under. Yeah. So that's kind of the tricky part is that barrier is kind of high. Now, um, I do remember when um, you had apprenticed under Bill, mm-hmm. you know, and and, um, and Bill, uh, fantastic yeah, home inspector. I got he lucky. was He was definitely my go-to guy for a long time. I'm yep. so sad that he's moved to Florida. Yeah, he's not. Um, I know he's not. I know he's not. But um, but I remember him saying to me, you know, I had this guy reach out to me to do this apprenticeship. And and I think that for a lot of home inspectors, it's not something that you easily say yes to. 
because you're basically giving away you're 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 building a competitor kind of and and you're giving away your i don't know if it secrets or or yeah. you know your insight on the job you know training to this person who could take your business away from you in the future and you probably did but he moved <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think we put a dent in each other's businesses but it is a lot to ask of somebody mm -hmm. because it's when you when it's all said and done it's 125 inspections that are done under, under supervision wow. you think about the time commitment of us having to meet at the same place and i'm tagging along with him and i have a hundred questions every day right that i expect him to answer mm -hmm. and he's in the middle of doing his job mm -hmm. and i could be saying something really stupid in front of one of his clients and you know how nervous buyers already are yeah. the last thing you need is somebody <laughs> questioning saying the wrong thing at the wrong time um so i i, I give him a lot of credit for taking me on um it's not an easy thing to do so 125 under someone that already has their license. Yeah, so it's so 25 under direct supervision oh, okay. and then 100 more under indirect supervision, so, which is a little loosely defined. Right, so how long did that take you to get all of that supervision done? It was taking too long, oh. so eventually I just saved up money so I didn't have to work for like the spring market. I was selling a fair amount of real estate at that point. So at that point, I was in the top producer club Whoa. and kind of newish what I was doing. <laughs> and I was actually rolling pretty good. I was building a good business. Okay. Um, and I was also training as an apprentice home inspector. So I basically took a spring market off and just went out with him every day to just get it done because wow. I was really, I was just eager mm -hmm. to get that done. Mm -hmm. um, it's, a, it's a huge time commitment, but it was just taking me way too long. So it probably took me. A year or two? I don't even know, oh, that to be honest with you. Um, just the apprenticeship part. Yeah. That's not including like the schooling, the right. testing, all that stuff. And you're not getting um, paid. You're, no. You're training. So, Correct. So the income is the real estate that you put on hold to get this right. done. So good um, for you. That's a bold That would be like step. you right now just saying, you know what, I'm going to take a couple months and yeah. Yeah. Which is like, this is busy season. Because so, you, you got bills to pay. Yeah. You have a family. Yeah. We just now, had a kid, like our first kid. So... Um, it, it was a, it was a tough choice, but I'm glad I did it. Yeah. Um, so then I started you? selling real estate and trying to do home inspections at the same time. And that's hard. I found it very wonky. I'm, I'm like an all in kind of person and doing real estate part time. I found just, it, it's not really a thing. Like it, it's too, you have to be available. You yeah, know, if I you're mean, not available, I, it's 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 hard. There's definitely people who find success in doing it part time, but I do agree with you that um, the commitment and the hours that it takes to do this job, you know, well, yeah, is um, is more than than part time. But if you're able to compartmentalize and and do both, then then great. Um, I just. I go back to when I was, I think I had like three part-time jobs when I got into this business because you needed some income. Yeah. And, and Lana, I, we've mentioned this in a different podcast, was the person who said, just just quit them and do this job yeah. solely. Yeah. And yeah. Focus you know, on one. What a difference it made. Yeah. So, so having done both. You know, I get it. So now you're, you've, you've decided to be a full fledged home inspector. Mm -hmm. And now you've got to get the word out. Although I suppose partly it's out because of the um, shadowing that you had done, the apprenticeship. Well, I was trying not to poach his clients. <laughs> I didn't, right, I didn't right. think that would be a very <clears throat> good way to get into the business. So you got him a house in Florida? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just got him out of here. Yeah, you get out. Um, I actually marketed directly to consumers to mm -hmm. get started because I, I really wanted to build that business um, where agents were meeting me while I was doing that job. I didn't want to take their impression, the previous impression of me as an agent mm -hmm. and apply it to me as a home inspector because they're two very different jobs. Exactly. So for me, I was more interested in having the consumer hire me and then who, whatever agent happened to be there would kind of get to see how I did that. Mm -hmm. And I kind of built my real estate agent referral tribe that way. Sort of backwards, but yeah. it worked out pretty well. And how long have you been doing it now? Full time. Um, I, I don't know. 
seven years, eight years, something like that. So you just mentioned earlier about family. Yeah. So how do you balance your life, your personal life, your work? Because, I mean, home inspectors, you know, it's constant. We'll talk about the little break you might have had. But let's <laughs> let's talk about the balance. How do you balance that? I mean, I mean, think about the when you were a real estate agent, it's 24-7. I get it. We do that. But how do you balance it as a home inspector, full-time home inspector? It's easier as a Is home it? inspector mm. if you're willing to turn business away. For me, that's how I do it. Oh. Mm. So I like could, you don't jam a bunch of them. I in just a day. don't. It's yeah. just I have issues with that because you, I run into a, a burnout issue. Yeah, true. Um, it's a very high focused job, and my goal is to be very present because I think it's very difficult as it is for buyers to hear that the thing that they're in love with has a bunch of problems with it. Oh, yeah. So like mm-hmm. to be present and really um, available f- for as long as they might need to get through that process, you know, like mm-hmm. I found that when I was doing, trying to do two inspections a day, I was not as present. I, w- I wasn't providing as good of a service. So for me, and I know other guys that can do, way more inspections than I can Mm -hmm. do and they can maintain a certain level of proficiency. But for me personally, I just found it dropped off Mm -hmm. at a certain point. So I just kind of naturally throttled. The beauty of it is I only have to be available when I'm available. It's not like real estate where you're working with the same client over a long period of time and you develop a certain expectation of how much time you're going to commit to their cause. Yeah. It's more like, here's my available appointments. This is what I've got. This is what works for me. This is what works for my family. My wife is starting businesses and doing her own thing too. And I can't chew up all of our collective time just doing my thing. No, right. So yeah, that's cool. In a way, it's simple. I just, I have certain availabilities and yeah. beyond that, I don't. So let's get into the meat, meat and potatoes. Yeah. Like what, mm. what yeah. is a home inspection? Yeah, what is it? I think the goal is to explain to somebody what they're buying. If you want to really simplify it, I just, my goal is to, that the person I'm working for has a clear understanding of what it is that they're purchasing from a condition standpoint. Mm-hmm. Yep. I think it's really important that we keep our nose out of, like having experience as an agent has really helped me understand my role because I think it's really easy to cross the line as an inspector and want to like take care of somebody beyond the condition of the house. Right. Mm-hmm. Whereas... I know it from being an agent that you guys spend a lot more time with these people. You know their financial situation. You know their personal situations. Um, so for us, it really, I think, should be strictly about um, we do have to build some rapport mm-hmm. because we do need people to be able to absorb what we're saying. Yeah. So I think it's really about um, carefully handling a, a relationship and going through a house very thoroughly and explaining the condition as we go. So my goal is that when they walk out of it, they know what they're buying. That, that's as simple as I could say it. Um, well, I know you're thorough. I've still joked around <laughs> with you. I, I'm going to put him on the spot <laughs> because my longest home inspection ever was with Mark. It was really? early on in my career, but let's it was, be clear. It was a four-family house. Yep. Oh, that's a And long it one. was an older property. And um, do you remember, I feel like when we were in the basement, it seemed like it was a two-story basement. It was huge. Basement. I do. Yeah. I was on and a ladder probing for were, termites. You were. You <laughs> were. Yeah. I mean, and, and I was like... Do we need to order lunch? You know, uh, oh, <laughs> it was, it, it was it a long time. Yeah, and was. I do feel as though, um, I mean, I know that that was exceptional. And yeah. I, I tease you only because it's every time I see you, I know I'm going to just poke the bear a little bit to yep. get a laugh out of you. That's but uh, I hope it's a laugh. Yeah. Um, but I think the average home inspection is generally like two to three hours yep. on a single family home. I, I mean, obviously, a, a larger property may be more involved. Um, but during that time, what I recognize with buyers is that you're going to have some that are going to follow you around, mm-hmm. that are going to ask questions. That's when it may take a little bit longer, that are very involved. And you've got others who are there measuring where their furniture is going to go yeah. while you're doing the home inspection. Right. And they're not really focused on what is happening. And then there's the... I, 
I joke about the ADHD. I probably shouldn't, but um, the person you who happen to you, hit it on you, the head. you you've only got them for about 10, 15 minutes, and then they've they've just glazed over and lost interest. Yeah. So when you're starting your home inspection, you usually show up early, right? I mean, I don't kinda, personally. I know don't? that's a common thing. Okay. But I don't do it. All right. I have well, several reasons for that, but. Okay, so. Do you always start on the outside? I, do. I know Bill had to go from right to left if you messed him up if he went the other way. <laughs> he was very set. Yes. Yes. I'm not quite that set in my ways, um, but I do like to arrive at the same time so that we can have a quick talk in the driveway to okay. set expectations, to, to help them understand what this process entails, what they're responsible for. So I essentially tell people like, look, just follow me around and listen to me. Yeah, that's about mm -hmm. the extent of your responsibility. I don't want you to worry about memorizing stuff because I'm going to take a couple hundred pictures and make that into a report. Um, so just kind of, and, and they don't have to follow me around, but I think most people, they want that education because there's stuff I can say about a house that I can't write about a house. Oh, like good stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. So Forgot we don't about write that. about good things in reports. No. But it really helps to have that perspective of, yes, there's a problem with this roof, but it's just this area. Right. Whereas when you see it in the report, it says it's a close up of mm. that problem and it, it looks terrible. So mm. I, I really encourage people to show up. Yeah. And I think sometimes kind of buyers get way. nervous about making sure they're writing everything down, like, you know, um, and they're nervous about it. But I think a one important thing is some home inspectors do not do photos and some do. And it's really important to know. Yeah. Um, I know when I am talking with my buyers and they're interviewing home inspectors to hire, I always say, maybe ask them these questions mm -hmm. because you don't know what you don't know. Right. So I always say like, you know, uh, Ask them how detailed their report is. Ask them, you know, the pictures and do all that because I think it's important later on because mm -hmm. there's so much information coming at them. Uh, you know, they might be interested in just, I just want him to check the roof or I just want to check the heat system or I just want this. But when you go through the whole thing, the yeah. little things they don't even realize, the electrical outlet, the opening the windows, you know, you don't think about some of the little things, um, a trim piece um, outside something. And so it's so overwhelming by the end of the day. I, I always say, go home and read. <laughs> go home right. and read that whole thing mm -hmm. and just digest it. No, you're 100% uh, correct. Right. And, it, and I love the fact that you just said right now, there's some things that you don't write that you can say, meaning the good stuff. Right. That is amazing. I keep forgetting that. So I got to remember that when I'm talking with the buyers, like, listen, the home inspector, because I think a lot of times consumers will say, oh, the home inspector is going to come in and they're going to find something. They have mm -hmm. to find something. That's it's, what they right, say. It's right. not that they hard to find to. something wrong. Right. right. But we are living in New England, which is four seasons. We get yeah. beat on a lot. The houses get beat on a lot from Mother Nature. But... The other piece is there's a lot of good that you yeah. learn about the right. house that um, I got to remember that terminology now when I'm talking to, you know, both buyer and seller is the home inspector is there to even tell you some of the great features in the house that are unique. Yeah. Have you ever had a house that you inspected that had nothing? Not yet. <laughs> I've come close, but wow. I consider that a unicorn house because yeah. it just hasn't happened yet where there's exist. not a single problem. But yeah. we have had houses with one or two right. pretty close. I you mean, know. I feel as though that sometimes the homeowner, you know, isn't aware of problems. It, they, it could be a very well-maintained home right. and there's just something they're not seeing and have, you know, you might come in with your, um, I don't know, little mold detector thingy <laughs> there. <laughs> Is Give it a thingy? I'm trying to guess which one. I'm is just going to let you hang on that for a minute. I want to see you describe that more. Um, you know, oh, the thermal well, imaging thank camera. You. There we go. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thermal imaging camera. I wasn't sure if we were camera. poking at termites there or yeah. what, so, what oh, that was. Oh, we can go to that okay. too. But uh, but yeah, I mean, things. That I was thinking of things behind walls that people may not see, right. yeah. but, but through an inspection get revealed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that tool is very useful for finding moisture. Mm -hmm. So there are roof leaks that I have found with that tool that... I 100% would not have found otherwise. So I think it's a very useful tool. Um, matter of fact, there was one, I walked on the roof and I know for a fact that I walked right by the spot where the leak was, but I didn't see it when it was on the roof. I did not see it when I was in the attic. Oh wow! And I did not see it when I went through the living space with my regular old eyeballs. I'm going back through that living space after I'd done all those three things with that thermal imaging camera and there is a gigantic purple spot, which is indicating it's cooler than what's around it. And it usually indicates moisture when it looks like a big water stain. 
So we checked it with a moisture meter. The ceiling was absolutely soaked, a large area of the ceiling, but there's no staining. There was no indicator that the insulation, the drywall, (laughs) everything was soaked. Right. And um, that tool saved my butt that day. Yes. You know, and it made me a very big believer in just using it every day, Mm -hmm. you know, because sometimes you're just going to, we're not going to catch all the problems. Mm. Now you do see, that doesn't mean we shouldn't try. You do see strange things at home inspections (laughs) and, um, and you, you know, uncover things. I just, just now remembered, I actually was the listing agent and you had done the home inspection. It was with, I think with Kendra and, um, I don't know where this is going. This, this was a, a condo, I think over at Fox Meadow, um, didn't you open the furnace? The <laughs> oh, now we remember. I remember now. Okay. You're talking about a bird? I, I wasn't present. I just got the story okay. and a quick video that yeah. was sent to my phone. It was more like the, oh my gosh, this never happens. Yes. I believe a bird flew out of that furnace. What? I don't think it was a bat in that case. We've seen a lot of bats too, oh. but in that case, I think a bird had come down. It was like one of those older furnaces that had a, you know, a straight up exhaust pipe on the thing. And the bird and somehow the bird. came all the way in there and had Like when to you be... ever opened that up, set me free. It's getting warm in here. <laughs> yep. I don't think it could find its way out. What so it ended up in the basement flying around oh us. Oh my gosh. What yeah. are some other strange things? Like, you know, you've seen everything. It all seems normal now. That's the thing. No, like, it I, seems normal. <laughs> I, I can't love even that. think of what stands right. out to me well, as odd you just anymore hold in, this, on because in this industry. I brought some pictures. Oh boy. I went to your Facebook page. Uh, you did uh, not. I sure did. I oh sure boy. did. Now, for anyone who's listening, they're not going to see this. Yes. Okay. Um, but this was just a post that you shared yesterday. Oh, yes. That's fresh. And um, <laughs> what is and, it? And um, what did you call it? Rust Buster? Um, That's what it is actually called. What I called right. it was the original colonoscopy <laughs> preparation. <laughs> um. <laughs> Yep. And so, um, I'm, I'm gonna, not even sure what I, that's supposed to know. be for. I don't it was know, a but really we're going to cool have to get that bottle. in front of a camera. <laughs> so go ahead, show it. Show These are it things to you only. Can- yep, um, that's on Instagram. <laughs> okay, what else do we have? All here? right, so this one is mm. plumbing fail. Um, but the comments were good too. Do you want to show that to the camera? Yes, okay. Please do. Plumbing fail. So this might not be readily apparent as to why that's no. a problem. No, and, and actually, because your response came from another home inspector mm-hmm. who got it. Yes. And I was like, what? I don't get it. So um, it's upside down day is your comment. Yes. So that's a plumbing trap. The purpose of a trap on a drain is to literally trap water, mm-hmm. which forms a liquid seal and prevents sewer gas from coming back up and into the house. Whoever installed that trap installed it upside down. So it will oh. drain, but it won't trap any water. The water will just <laughs> go right through the whole system <laughs> and you'll have sewer gas coming back the other way. Or vermin. All right. Vermin is All a right. word that nobody gets to use enough, but mm. vermin can come out of sewer systems too. And they generally won't make vermin. their way through a trap. I was just thinking of a cartoon or something yeah. you know, in my head. <laughs> but, uh, but that might be one of those, you know... Um, homeowner special that uh, yeah. a YouTube video went on there, mm-hmm. you know, and, and I, I assume it wasn't done by a licensed plumber. Oh, definitely not. So there was a theme going on in that. You want to show this one too. All right. What um, is this? Oh, that was a good one. So that is a post, right? Yep. So what does it say on yours? Another provocative post. Ah, uh, little pun on hey, it. Like my dad puns. <laughs> what yeah. can I say? <laughs> This one was undressing and showing me its concrete nakedness. Oh. All right, so Mark has personality. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see now the concrete. Yep. Ah. Uh, so, yep. Yep. Yeah, you don't see that was the worst one I'd ever seen, but that's where a conc- a lally column, a steel lally column filled with concrete, is actually taking water and the concrete is wicking it up and corroding the steel. So sometimes you'll find a concrete lally column, yeah. a support post in a basement that's leaking water like five feet up. And we don't have to be in a soaking wet basement for this to happen. It can huh. just be like a high water table and it's wicking it right up like a, like a candle. Oh boy. That one was All really right. bad. This one. Oh, 
she's this one I don't have the comments. <laughs> you really dug deep. I I um uh, actually I think no. I only went back a few months. Is that I, I yeah. Hmm. Yeah, that one that um feels like a long time ago. But that's that's some Stephen King stuff. Yeah, right that, that looks that like is. Some... It's little bird skeletons and um so that's in the chimney. Chimney. Yeah. Mm. I, I don't know why it's hard to even get the scale from the picture. I, you don't, Does this like, mean you that someone never cleaned out their chimney? Oh, hundred percent. Yeah. <laughs> and they don't have a trap at the top to stop yeah, it. Yeah. There was nothing on the top. And uh. I don't know why birds were so attracted to that chimney, but I lost count. <laughs> All right. I got, I got a couple more for you. All right. This one, this was in November What's wrong with and that? it says, <laughs> if I had a sweet gutter tree like that, I would decorate it for the holidays. Do you see that? Oh. Is it just <laughs> me? It made this me is going to be like, a hard one um, to see yeah. on camera. I, okay. There's right. this adorable little yeah, tree. Little tree. There's a tree the growing out of the gutter. It made me think of the Grinch. Yes. There's something gringy yes. about the, that. This happens often. You know, yeah. you go you go by yeah. and you're looking on the outside and everyone's looking at the roof and I'm looking at the gutter lines. <laughs> Is that should we go weed up there? Yeah. <laughs> it's so tempting. Yeah. Well, you're the one with the ladder, right? Yeah. And sometimes uh, I just clean out the muck while I'm up there, but it, yeah, it's amazing what people get upset about too. So I try not to alter anything. It's even true. if I think I'm being helpful right. at this point. I try to stay away from altering anything. anything. Well, in that picture right there, so the gutter needs to be cleaned. <laughs> Clearly, you know, and it, obviously, if something is growing out of it, it hasn't been cleaned in a while. Yep. Does that mean that the house is a fail? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. They should not buy that house. So. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. That's it. That's it. Clean your gutters, Clean folks. Your gutters. Otherwise, Otherwise you know, we just fail the whole thing. Mark yeah. is going to go in there with an ornament. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question, though. Home inspections are not pass or fail, right? No. Like, we're there to, right. to give somebody the idea of the entire condition of the house. And you guys have the job of actually helping them understand how that fits. Because I don't know what they're paying. I right. don't know what it's yeah. worth. I don't know what their capabilities are. Right. And that's what I meant earlier by we should probably stay in our lane because right. you guys know that about the client. Yeah. We don't. Mm -hmm. We might. I've seen people, and this is kind of cool, like having had that perspective as an agent, mm -hmm. I've seen inspectors speculate and want to steer out of their lane and start um helping people mm -hmm. make a decision. We're not supposed to, like right. it's actually in our standards of practice that we're not supposed to tell people right. whether or not to buy a house and we can't quote costs. So I think when they wrote that, they were trying to tell us, I, I used to not agree with that. When I first started, I was mm -hmm. used to being an agent mm -hmm. and I was used to advising people on those very things. Mm -hmm. So it was hard for me to shut that off at first. But then I realized like as an inspector, you're rolling up and you're meeting that person Right there and then. Mm -hmm. And then you're going right to work on the house. You mm -hmm. don't have time to understand their, their situation in life. No. A lot of, I mean, let's face it, a lot of real estate transactions are not always for happy reasons. Right. You know, and you can't presume to know if a person is in a desperate situation and they need to buy a house like right now. Right. You know, they don't have a choice. Like no. this is the thing. They need a place to live. This is, you know, they're getting booted out of their apartment. It's True. being sold, mm -hmm. whatever it is. Um, they're, so, they're saying, Mark, please tell us it's not going to fall down. That's all we care about. Right. And I can't it's answer that question either. Fall. It's, right. But, you know, it's more like, look, here's what it is. Exactly. And then plug that into your equation. Yep. You know, what's right. the, what's it worth? What, what feel, do you, why are you buying it? When you're talking about staying in your lane, I would say the same thing for real estate agents. You know, I, I, I may point out something that I'll say, you know, you might want to ask a home inspector mm -hmm. about, but I don't go in there pretending to know anything yeah. about Mm -hmm. anything mm -hmm. regarding the house. Um, you know, the most common issue that I see during a home inspection, and you'll have to correct me if your most common thing is different, mm -hmm. um, but uh, double tapping in an electric panel. <laughs> and you've got one buyer who will view that as the house is going to burn down and I can't buy it and I'm mm. terrified. And, and you've got mm. someone else who doesn't see it as a problem, recognizes that it's a quick fix. And, you know, sometimes you're adapting to the personality, mm -hmm. but like you said, you don't have that relationship with them. So I think the delivery of the information. Yeah is important just as much as the information that's being put out there. Mm -hmm. Yep. 
And I think that's part of what we were talking about earlier about being present Mm -hmm. and being available to quickly build rapport and understand where a person's coming from as far as how they take in information. Mm -hmm. Um, Because that's a super common problem that you're describing that is not that big a deal 99% of the time and it needs to be explained properly Mm -hmm. that it's not that hard to fix. You know, it's right. not that it shouldn't be fixed, but like a lot of cases, it's super easy to fix. So, yeah, it everybody needs things explained in a way that they're going to comprehend it properly. Mm-hmm. That's the tricky part if you're, well, for me anyway, if I'm a grumpy, burnt out mess, <laughs> you <laughs> know, I it, it's going to come across that way. Right. And that's not what people need. Well, um, I want to know what your thoughts are. Um, we've gone through, not jumping off topic or anything like that, but we've gone through a huge period where um, buyers have been waiving inspections. Mm. And um, so obviously you weren't working much and, or maybe you were, but Mm. do you think that you would recommend like a pre-inspection for either a buyer or seller, like going to appointments with the buyers or with the seller in advance? Like what do you recommend during that? That's a great topic. Mm. I have mixed thoughts and feelings on this. I think <laughs> that's <is> great. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's a couple ways to look at this. When COVID hit yeah. and things actually went nuts, like don't ever ask me for a real estate market prediction because I was completely wrong. Mm-hmm. I thought COVID was going to crush the market. We all did. I could not have been more wrong we about all did. that. all yeah. That's what I was preparing for. The opposite happened. So we started going nuts yep. and we're busy. And I know amongst... Um, I was having this conversation with other inspectors that I know, you know, should we do like walkthrough inspections? Because people were asking for it Mm -hmm. and I could see that there was some value to it because I mean, we start inspecting a house the minute it comes into view. This house is we roll up to where it's like, why are we even here? Oh, this house is bad. You just Mm -hmm. know it as soon as you roll up the driveway. So I think there's a case to be made for, is there value in somebody just doing a quick walkthrough. And I think there is. The problem that I see with it, and the reason I decided ultimately not to do it, is A, we have a standards of practice for a reason. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, let me give an example. Like, just the other day, um, we we were getting kind of deep into the basement of this house. And a lot of it was not accessible it was very difficult to see the parts of the house that I wanted to see. Mm -hmm. And eventually I found a way to do it. But as you might guess, it took a little bit of crawling and climbing Mm -hmm. and yeah, it, it, it took a little bit of work that most certainly would not have been done. You know, one of the, let's face it. One of the reasons I think people like walkthrough inspections from both sides is it's quicker. Mm -hmm. It's less money. And, from just a simple human perspective, it's way easier on an inspector to do it. Mm-hmm. You can make good money running around doing mm-hmm. these things. But this house was significant, like had significant termite damage, but it was really hard to find. But once you knew it was there, then you could identify it in other locations. But there was really like no readily accessible visual evidence. And I could I could just rattle off situation after situation right. after situation where these are not minor problems. These are things that people, whether they buy the house or not, need to know about. Yeah. Like, that's what we're there for. Right. And you can't do that. Um, You're going to miss big stuff, whether you think you are or you're not. Um, And I think that's a big problem. I think there's a reason that we are sort of, not mandated, but, like, there's a reason that we do things the way we do things. There's a reason it takes a few hours. It doesn't always turn up big problems, but right. sometimes it does. But and it, I know I think that you're some of them that, are going to get missed. I think you're saying that more that you didn't feel that you needed in your business not to do the pre-inspection type thing or the walkthroughs um, is because you just didn't feel like um, on your end you were going to give much value to that. Um, I jumped fire. around. Let me back up a second. Yeah. Um, sort of. I think, I think doing them... Just the act of doing walkthrough inspections erodes from what we're really out there to do. Of course. So the more we do them as an industry, the more buyers and agents get used to having that option. And it's faster. And it's more, you can schedule more of them. Mm -hmm. We as inspectors should know better, I think, than to 
do less than what we know we need to do to do a good job because we just see it too often mm-hmm. where, man, if I didn't go in there, I would have not have seen that. Right. You know, and right. some of these are small problems, but some right. of them are big problems. Mm-hmm. And we're never, again, we're never going to catch them all, mm-hmm. but you've got a heck of a lot better chance of catching it if you're really in there doing it, you know, do you, spending the time. Do you think it's important for sellers to have a home inspection before they go on the market? That's a tricky one. I, don't, I think it depends on the market. Yeah. I, well, I agree. I think depends on the house too. I mean, if it's if you think it's a good house, it's only kind of reinforcing that. Mm-hmm. But as an agent, you know, some of these houses are in pretty rough shape, and now the seller knows all these things that they didn't. I know, know. right? Um, so I that's a, that's a tricky did it one because it gave them an opportunity to not be surprised if yeah. the buyer then mm-hmm. did one because. It, as we described, often these homeowners aren't aware that these issues even exist. Right. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and I think it's natural as, as a seller to be nervous when buyer is doing sure. a home inspection because you don't know what they're going to come back to you with. You don't know if they'll try to terminate the transaction, right. you know, what's right. going to happen. Um, and nowadays you've got buyers who are waiving the home inspection and you might be competing against a buyer who wants to have one. Excuse me. I just had one recently where I had a cash buyer that wanted a home inspection Hmm. that was up against financing buyers who were waiving home inspection. That's interesting. And the sellers chose the financing buyers simple reason hmm. they Less just risk. yeah they, and isn't that weird but mm-hmm. i guess you could also say that it it goes back to you know how thorough of a pre-approval pre-commitment yeah. we, mm-hmm. we had this conversation on the financing side of things some of these pre-approvals are pretty solid right so it, you, know, you know on the closing lender and days, you know it's strong yeah at the closing day it's all it's cash anyways but I just, you know, we used to say cash is king. So mm-hmm. now is waiving home inspections king? And is that going to come back into play? Because you've just pointed out a lot of valuable information that gets revealed during a home inspection. But isn't it also, like, think about the first time home buyer. They have no idea how to, you know, be a homeowner. Right. You know, There's aren't a lot you, of education aren't you there. you providing that as well? 100%. Yeah. Maintenance. There's yeah. a lot of maintenance yeah. tips and things that he says, like, you know, I feel that mm-hmm. um, home inspectors do for first home buyers. You um, often will say, this is a maintenance item. Looks like this is going to need maintenance or whatnot. Um, I think that's really important. It's not just about, is the place going to fall down, a structural, um, or is there a ton of... Um, you know, safety issues. But like you said, there's a lot of good stuff that you share. And yeah. I think this is a lot for a first home buyer. And yeah. um, I think there's so much value for that. I mean, I did home inspections every time I bought something. <laughs> yeah, me Even too. Even just identifying things for people. Yes. Like, I think new construction inspections are a good example yeah. of um, even experienced home buyers mm-hmm. just explaining like these new electrical panels mm-hmm. that have whole house surge protection. Mm-hmm. They have arc fault breakers. They have ground fault breakers. How do you reset them? What are these things? Mm-hmm. Um, what to look for? Uh, do I need to maintain a tankless water heater? Do I need to do this? Do I, what is this thing hanging on the wall? We spend just as much time on education as we do finding problems. Yep. I think particularly in new construction, but there's going to be a balance there, um, especially with first time buyers or somebody who hasn't bought in 20 years, or, I mean, I just ran into somebody the other day that was like almost 60, I think they said, and that was their first purchase. Yeah. They'd been in apartments their whole life. Yeah, that so, had that too, yeah, definitely happening. They, don't, they were absorbing a lot. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of information. So you brought up a lot of things that you do inspect. What do you not inspect? <laughs> um, so it depends on how you look at it, I guess. <laughs> I mean, anything that's not directly part of the house, for sure. So we're mainly focused on the five major systems that make up a house. The roof and the building envelope that keeps everything dry, the structure that holds everything up, the electrical, the plumbing, the heating. Um, There's a lot of smaller systems in between there. But um, some of the things people wonder about, I think, would be hazardous materials. Like, do we test for asbestos? No. No. Can you readily identify asbestos just by looking at it? No. So that's a compelling reason to stay away from it. It can be a very misleading thing to talk about it unless you're 
testing for it. Mm -hmm. Lead paint, um, radon, water quality. Some of these things you can do as an add-on or mm -hmm. ancillary service. Um, outbuildings, you know, detached structures like swimming barns, pools. garages, swimming pools. I don't <laughs> touch them with a 10 foot pole. I don't know anything about them. You know, if we lived in Florida, I would certainly get educated on pools. Sure. But, so I Bill's mean, probably doing this now. Yeah, he probably <laughs> is. I should no, ask but him that. I think you're right. Like the outbuildings, like a lot of times people will say, can, can you go check this barn out, right? right. Like it's a hundred year old barn. Can yeah, you it's tell not me? a small thing. Oh, my like, oh, you might have to get like, you know, a contractor or somebody. We'll to, do them, but yeah. I mean, we, hey, yeah, it's not course. included of in the course. home inspection. It's not, it's, what about appliances? You know, I test them for basic function. Mm -hmm. This is an area um, I think is debatable even within our community. Like, how far do you go with an appliance? Mm. Like, I just want to know if the darn thing works. Mm. Yeah. You know, does it turn on? Does it, can you heat mm. a pot of water? Mm. Does the dishwasher pee all over the floor when it right, drains? Like, right. these are good things to know. But I'm not going to actually take it to the level of does it clean dishes or, you know, right. put material through the garbage disposal and it's let's just focus, basic testing let's focus on one other thing just to make sure you're not looking for code violations Correct. you are looking for your specific list of things as far as safety structure of the house yep. it's not about code so let me let me ask you something though when you're in there for a specific loan program mm -hmm. someone says i am financing with this program i need you to check extra things you're not there for code true got it so you yep. know like a missing handrail or it's safety correct we reference code because stairways as an example mm -hmm. have really nuanced and detailed requirements mm -hmm. and it's all around safety yeah so no matter what word is being used uh, whether it's code or not yeah it's we're trying to follow the same standards as, um, and Massachusetts is unique too. We we have um, our own interpretations, let's say, of the building code. There's a lot of amendments yeah. to the Massachusetts <laughs> building code. So it's also good to be aware of that because it might differ, it does differ in many cases from our own like national based training. So mm. I think it's smart for us to learn um, at least some aspects of the building code. I mean, if you, Put it in this room, it, I bet. it would be a giant stack. No one's going to memorize that whole thing. No. That would be insane. But there are definitely aspects of it that we, I think we need to understand. But you're still learning it because job. you always say that Constantly. you've taken a job, <laughs> taken jobs Constantly. on to learn more. Oh my You'll never God. be able to get out of this um, industry that That's you're what in. what I love about I it. I know. Though. I mean, it's I constant. am ADD. And <laughs> you're stuck I, if now. I get bored <laughs> with something, I get grumpy and I go do something else. Yeah. And this job has captivated me because there's no end to it learning yeah. with it i'm still just constantly filling my head and then in five years you forget the thing you learned five years ago and you gotta go relearn it so yeah i mean the massachusetts houses are very interesting i mean mm. we got stuff from the 1600s all the way up to mm. just built yep. and trying to understand all of that and keep it in your skull is challenging mm -hmm. in a good way in are a good, you it's having a good, to go challenge. through um you know, additional training for your license to, mm -hmm. for renewals, just like we are with our CEUs. Yep. Same so as we, you guys. So same thing. Um, off topic from that, but but it was in my head, and if I don't say it, it's I'm going to Go lose for it. it. <laughs> <laughs> so I, um, I did bring up the word mold. So I'm going to talk about mold okay. because I feel like in home inspection reports, it's mold-like substance. I use possible mold, but possible yes. Possible mold, okay. So so <laughs> you can see what looks like mold, but you can't identify it as mold, is that? I try to be realistic about this. We all have a different approach. I think people are very worried about liability when it comes yes. to things like this. Mm -hmm. And I, try, I personally just try not to live my life in fear of litigation. I don't think it's a good approach to communicating okay. with people. Mm -hmm. um, so if it walks like a duck and it quacks like a duck, I think it's fair to say it's probably a duck. Um, but is the duck alive or dead? <laughs> that's where it gets tricky. Okay. But the duck shouldn't be there. Right. Okay. You know, ducks yeah. don't belong in houses. Yeah. Okay. So if the duck's there, I think it's worth talking about whether it's alive or dead. Yeah. Um, okay. That makes sense. Active or inactive yeah. mold. So yeah, that's a tricky I just want to make sure I was explaining why the duck was dead. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. All right. So, so you, 
Would you say that you are a jack of all trades? I thought she was going to say something else. Mm. Master of none. Yeah, we're generalists. You're generalists. Yeah. So when you're identifying issues, you're backing it up with, hey, listen, this looks like you've got double tapping in your electric panel. Consult a licensed electrician. Mm -hmm. You know, or your your um, your plumbing here is installed upside down. Mm. (laughs) Right. In that case, we don't need anybody licensed to tell us that just to fix it. So. And I think that's important. Um, One of the reasons I'm subject to burnout in this is because I believe in writing reports, not Mm -hmm. just using boilerplate. Mm -hmm. Because I think when you guys go to use our report to negotiate, if I have a three paragraph essay that I just click a box in my software that says there's something wrong with the siding somewhere, somehow, in some very weird shape or form. If there's so much verbiage, you can't even un- understand what the heck I'm trying to say because yeah. I want a really generalized comment so I don't have to write something every time. It's not it, very helpful. And this is something I'm foolish enough to take on myself in the sense that um, it takes me a long time to write reports because of the photos, the videos, the narrative descriptions, but I think it makes them more useful. So in what you made me think about is in the case of the plumbing trap, we don't need somebody to evaluate that. Mm-hmm. We already know it's a problem. So right. just say okay. it's a problem. Right. Just say it needs to be fixed. Right. Okay. You know, I think um, there's certain things that are uh, obvious right. and they need to repair. They don't need to be evaluated. We don't need a second opinion. They're just problems yep. and they should get fixed. Right. Um, and then there's other things that are just beyond what a generalist can be expected to understand where we know something's wrong, Mm -hmm. but we don't fully understand it. Mm. You need somebody who, like the other day we had a carbon monoxide issue in a house. I have have this personal carbon monoxide detector on my backpack. (laughs) I know, I have all these crazy gadgets. (laughs) But it came about for a good reason. I was in a crawl space one day, and I was way deep in there before I realized that the the vent pipe for the furnace was disconnected inside the crawl space. And it occurred to me that that could kill me. So I said, you know what would be a good idea is to get one of those things that the firefighters have, those little CO detectors, and just throw it on my backpack. And I forget it's there. But the other day it went off. And I'm just random. It was like just in the middle of somebody's house. And I'm going, "Wow, there's not many things in this house that would produce carbon monoxide. But that's a perfect scenario where I do have to schlep that off on somebody else because I don't know what's causing it. They need somebody who's a specialist to come in and say, okay, Figure this out because this could hurt somebody. Yeah. And, you know, I just, if I knew what it was, I'd say so. But I think that's a really good scenario where that's, that's what gets really written good, is like, you right. need further evaluation on this. That's a good scenario for it. Inspect your um, gadget. That's just what popped <laughs> in my head. So. There it is. Oh. Well, listen, I before we take this on too, too long, because I think we could certainly get into a lot of details and I think we, we have great content here. I appreciate you coming. Mm. Um, I want to suggest because of all the fun things, I even had another one, but we won't post that out there <laughs> too. Um, not you, you've it. got, if you are not on social media and connected to watch, choose it, um, home inspection, you should. Yes. <laughs> you should. Please do. So Facebook, We're on Facebook and, Instagram. and Instagram. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, rather entertaining. Mark has great personality and clearly doesn't take the job too serious <laughs> um, other than when it needs to be. Right. And um, and then you do have your own website as well. Yep. Um, WatchYouSitInspection.com and okay. people can book on there. Okay, great. And um, and that's the best way for them to schedule inspections? It's the only way. I don't take appointments over the phone. Okay. I'm always happy to talk to people on the phone, but I can't be trusted to write things down. Okay, okay. So, so, no way. Just go online. Right. There's a form there. You can just fill it out. Yeah. Or reach his wife. And <laughs> No, I didn't drag her into this business. No, she's got her own things going on. Look at you. She's busy. Up the pot. She's busy raising two girls, yes. you know, while you're while you both are raising two girls. We are. So. Yeah. I'm an active dad. That's Great. wonderful. Yeah. Now, but thank you so much for yep. coming today. That was today. a pleasure. I appreciate yeah, you guys great. thinking of me. There's a lot of new stuff that I learned too, so yeah. oh, I'm excited. Oh, me as well. Yeah. Me as well. And, and to share more dialogue with my clients has really been helpful, so it's great. Yeah. great. And encourage the home inspections mm-hmm. again. I, I do think it's important. I mm-hmm. think that you provide a valuable service, and, um, and the fact that there's still buyers willing to waive them, um, you know, perhaps they are also Jack of all trades mm. and, and and they're comfortable with that i mean who knows but uh but thank you again for coming and uh thanks for tuning in um you yeah know, 
You can reach Lana and I at Caldwell Banker in Lemonster. Uh, please uh, subscribe and share, and we um, would love to hear from you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. This was fun. <laughs>